Hi guys, welcome back to The Wargamer and another episode of Advanced Techniques. In this video, we're going to be painting leather and for that, I'm going to be using some of these paints from the leather and buckle set from AK Interactive because these paints are designed for use with leather so it makes the most sense to use these but I will be including a full list of alternatives uh, to these paints in the description below for you to use as well. So for this video, you will need the following items. An airbrush. Mine is a HPC Plus powered by an Iwata SmartJet Pro compressor. Some paint thinner. As I'm using AK paints, I'll be using AK's thinner as well. A medium brown paint. I'll be using brown leather, but similar paints include Games Workshop's Dried Bark or the Army Painter's Leather Brown. A very dark brown grey or black. Paints such as this leather dark shade, Games Workshop's Abaddon Black or the Army Painter's Necromancer Cloak are perfect for this. A light sand colour. In addition to this AK paint, you could also use Games Workshop's Rakar Flesh or the Army Painter's Banshee Brown. A dark brown wash. Washes similar to dark brown glaze that I'll be using here include Agrax Earthshade from Games Workshop or Strong Tone Ink from the Army Painter. And finally, a primed miniature to paint. The first area of our leather robe that I'll be painting will be the dark base colour. For this, I'll be using leather dark shade through my airbrush. Straight from the bottle, the paint is a little too thick to be used in our airbrush, so we need to thin it a little bit. To do this, we'll need some thinner. Now, whilst there are many different thinners available, it's generally advised that you use the same brand of thinner as the paint you're using to avoid any potential problems. If you don't have a thinner, then you could instead use distilled water, but a thinner is preferable. So start by adding a small amount of thinner to your airbrush. A few drops will do as I try to only keep a small amount of paint in my airbrush at any one time. When airbrushing the miniature, we will be setting our compressor to around 20 psi of pressure and we'll be applying some thin layers to the model, holding the nozzle around 3 inches away from the surface that you're painting. Try not to focus on any one area and keep the brush moving as you paint. Don't worry too much about getting full coverage on your first coat, instead allow your first layer to dry and then apply another light layer of paint over the top. Repeat until you're happy with the colour. To achieve this lighter colour, we will be using our original base colour of leather dark shade mixed with some brown leather. We want to mix the two paints together in roughly two parts brown leather to one part leather dark shade, whilst maintaining that milky consistency by adding in some thinners. With our airbrush, we now want to apply our dark brown mixture over the outside of the robes. However, we still want to maintain some dark leather shade visible inside the robes as well as in the deepest recesses, as this will create the appearance of shading. In this next step, I'll be using some thinned brown leather on its own, but this time we want to focus on painting a little more precisely. The areas we want to carefully pick out are the raised folds in the robe as well as the robe's hem. By targeting our airbrushing more precisely, we will create the effect of shadows in the recesses, which will help to improve the details, whilst also starting to give the bottom of the robe a worn appearance. Before proceeding to the next step, we will want to mix together some brown leather and light sand in roughly equal quantities. Using this light brown paint, we will want to focus on enhancing that worn effect at the bottom of the robe. However, instead of applying the airbrush directly to the miniature, we first of all want to create a mask. For this, I'll be using a small piece of foam, which has been torn to create a jagged edge. Using our foam, we want to place the uneven edge, almost touching the bottom of the robe. Then, using our airbrush, carefully apply our light brown mix of paint. This will create an uneven edge at the bottom of the robe, which will give the effect of general wear and tear. Using the same mixture as before, I'll now be using a brush to paint some of the raised areas of the robe. Using a small brush with just a small amount of the thinned mixture on the tip, we want to very carefully create some thin lines along the ridges of the folds. This will serve to make these areas really stand out. In this next step, we again want to use a thin brush to apply our paint, but this time we'll be using the light sand on its own. In this step, we want to very carefully add some scratches and scuffs to the leather surface. I'll be focusing my attention mainly towards the bottom of the robe as this is where most damage would occur. With some vertical and diagonal brush strokes starting at the bottom of the robe, we can easily create a damaged effect. In addition to this, I'll also be adding in some very thin and subtle lines to the rest of the robe. These will appear as scratches in the leather once completed. The final step in painting our leather is to further accentuate the folds in the cloth. By using the dark brown wash with a brush, we can target the wash into the recesses directly. This will further darken down the shading, making otherwise flat areas appear much more pronounced. 
And here we have the completed leather robe. For this demonstration, I wanted to create a damage and battle worn effect on my leather, but by skipping those last few steps where I applied the thin lines of light sand, you could easily create a less rugged appearance. Now, hopefully, after following these steps, you will know how to not only paint leather, but also how you can go about adding additional detail to rather flat looking areas. And so that concludes this video on how you can paint leather. Now, whilst I've used an airbrush and used quite a large area of leather to paint, you could apply the same techniques to smaller areas such as belts and pouches, things like that. But you would have to forego uh, using that kind of nice transition, but it wouldn't be uh, as necessary on a smaller area. The main things to remember here are the, the two base coats and that wash and also that little edge highlights where we've got the scratches in there as well. So if you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below along with your suggestions for future advanced techniques videos as well. And if you're interested in uh, finding out more about how you can support this channel, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page, which is in the description below. So the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.